Hi everyone. So lately a lot of people are talking about loaders for some reason. And I've seen this nice, nice example where I have multiple tabs showing different pages. And when I click on the second page, look what happens. There is a loader that appears. If I don't do anything, then the third page loads, or fourth, or fifth. But let's say the user does click on the loader. Then it just stays on the same page. So if your user stops going to a page, by clicking the loading indicator, then it cancels the transition. And I think it's pretty nice behavior. Sometimes you do want to cancel a long-running operation when you change your mind. You don't want to wait for it to finish and go back to where you were. In this video, I want to show how I would test this page using Cypress. We can test how we load the page successfully, how the loading indicator appears, and how the transition is cancelled if we click on the loading indicator to cancel the transition. So let's do this. Right now this is a code pen, so I will export this into a zip file. Uh, you have to be logged in. Okay, let me log in. Okay, I'm logged in, so let's export as a zip file. Download. Okay, it's my downloads folder. Emulate navigation. So I will move navigation right here okay so now i'll go into that folder i will start a new github repository just so that i have everything and i will add everything okay let's pop it in vs code so what do we have here we have an index file and we have a javascript and a little bit of styling okay I do see a build this folder. What do we have here? Styles. Okay. I think we can just load that this index.html from Cypress. So we're going to install Cypress and just in case prettier because I want this code to look nice. Because I don't think I'll use any support files, or fixtures, or plugins. I'm going to initialize a new Cypress spec using my utility called Bakhmutov CLI init bear. Okay, just scaffolded a single spec file. And one last thing, data sessions, copy the pretty file right here. Okay, so we have Cypress JSON and we don't really have anything there. And for Cypress spec, let's say it goes from tab to tab. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to visit this index HTML page. That's how we're going to start. Let's open Cypress. I will click on the spec. It will be on my right. And I'll have my code editor on the left. Okay, so when we visit the page, the first tab should be active. Let's look at the markup. I'm going to look at the elements. And we have a tab list. And there is a button, right? And it shows page one. Okay, so we can say when we visit the page, we're gonna get, uh, let's say, button, roll, tab, okay? And let's just say contains, because then we can say that inside should be page one, page one. And it should have attribute area selected and value should be true. Right, because the first tab is visible. We can also check if page itself, right, if the contents inside contains page one. So we will say site contains content class page one content. Okay, perfect. So we confirm that when we load the page, the first tab is selected. Uh, just for kicks, Let's check that the second page um, should not have attribute area selected. Now, let's navigate. So we can write a separate test or let's just continue writing a test here. So one thing I like to do, I want to separate big sections of a big test with log messages. Goes to tab. Okay, and I use double wildcards to make it bold. Okay, so right here. So what do we have to do? We have to click on, let's say, page two. So we'll find it again, and we'll click on it. So what happens? It navigates, right? So we'll take what we had before, 
and we'll say this time page 2 should have area selected true and the first one page 1 should not have area selected attribute anymore and notice the built-in auto retry in Cypress commands uh, runs for 4 seconds and it's plenty of time to make sure a two second transition finishes and we switch to a second tab. Perfect. And just the last thing, we want to check if the page two content is present on the page. Now we do repeat the same checks again and again. So let's have a little utility function. So on page and let's say index. All right, so this index will be one, two, three, and so on. So how to check if we are on a specific page? Well, we can just say, in this case, index, right? And the same thing right here, so that we can dynamically say we are on the page one. And when we go to the second page, we are on the page two. And this will cut down on the repetition in our test substantially. Okay, now let's do the fun part. Let's make sure when we go from page to page, the loading indicator is displayed. So I will write a separate test, right? And I will concentrate on only running that test right now. So what do we do? have to do? We will do almost the same thing, but when we click, right, we want to make sure that the loading indicator is displayed. Now the loading indicator is probably Okay, how do we check uh, what the selector is for loading indicator? Well, we can look it up in our script, right? We can say data loading, right? I think this is it, uh, data loading, yes. So we can say when we click, right, and say get, is this an attribute? It's an attribute, right? And it's attribute of the tab that we clicked on, okay, okay. So what we have to do, we will have to say, if we get, after we click on this, it should have attribute data loading. Okay, let's see. Notice how it immediately gets the attribute data loading, right, on page two. And when we are on the page two, right, then we can say, that this attribute should go away, should not have attribute data loading. Perfect. So we just confirmed that when we click on the tab, that it gets the attribute data loading, right, which makes that element visible. Let's comp make sure that it is visible. Okay, so when we have attribute data loading, what else does appear? Nothing, nothing. What's our markup? How does it draw the thing? That's a question that I don't understand. Data loading. Okay, right here. This is what it does, right? It actually places some content using CSS. Okay, okay, that's fine. Data loading true content. I see. So one thing that's really nice is that once we confirm that the data loading does show up, if we use time travel and debugger, right? Notice right here. After we clicked, right, we actually see this content in the dump snapshot. Okay, so if you want to know how to find this element, here's what we do. We remove a highlight because I don't want this overlay. I just want to see the underlying element. Okay, so this is what was rendered. Okay, let's see what we can do. <laughs> so this is a CSS pseudo selector after. How do we click on that from Cypress, right? And what happens, right? Can we actually click just on the tab itself? So if I do nothing, right? If I click on page four and then click on page four. Okay, notice I don't have to click on the loading indicator. I can just click on the tab itself to cancel. Okay, so this tells me everything I need to write the last, okay? And the last test would be to cancel navigation. Okay, so uh, shows loading element and it cancels transition. Okay, so when we are on page two and 
we click on the page. If we're on page one, we click on page two. It displays the loading. I'm going to wait for seconds. So we actually see something in, in Cypress. Otherwise, it's way too fast, right? And then we're going to get the same page, page two. Actually, which way is it? So page, okay. No, it's page one. Now we're on page two. We're on page one. We click page two. So the page two gets the loading indicator. We click on it again and the page two should not have a loading indicator, right? It goes away and we are still on page one. Okay, let's see how this works. Okay, let's run this again. Page two, click again, cancel the navigation and it still is on page one. Perfect. All three tests one after another. Navigation works, loading indicator displays and then disappears and we can cancel the navigation. So this is how you would write a test for the loading element that you can cancel by clicking it again.